Oh, and by the way, do you like my shirt? I call it my ultimate tourist shirt. Oh, I just filmed this whole video. Now I've got to do it again. There was a file error. Ugh. Okay, here we go. China is one of mankind's earliest civilizations. It's been around since the possibly mythological Xia Dynasty, which dates back to 2000 BC-ish. And historians technically note this as a long ass time. When you get down to the name of China in Chinese, it's Zhongguo, which can be translated as the Middle Kingdom. And that says a lot about the ancient Chinese and to some extent the modern Chinese view of its own civilization, a, a central civilization to the world. This is not an entirely unfair way to view their country because, you know, China is relatively geographically insulated. You've got the uh, Gobi Desert to the north, you've got the deserts of uh, Xinjiang and Tibet over in the west and then in the south and on the east you've got the ocean so for a long time china was pretty much on its own and as a consequence to that developed a really really unique culture that was relatively untouched by the west until about the 1700s even when you know trade with foreigners did happen it was usually restricted to the coast with the sea routes from the silk road or in northwestern china with the overland routes uh, from the silk road besides the silk road ancient china is also remembered by what's called the four great inventions which are paper uh, gunpowder, the printing press, and the compass. All of those were invented in China way before they were invented in Europe. Ancient China was superior to the West, at least until about the Industrial Revolution, where China kind of had to hand the baton off to Britain. China remained more or less the same until about the time of the Opium Wars and the forced opening and modernization of China. They didn't really want to do it, but that's just what the, that's just what happened. So after the aforementioned long-ass time of dynastic rule, you have what's called the Republic of China, which was established uh, by Sun Yat-sen in uh, 1912, and then there was a civil war. Mao Zedong came in with the Communist Party and established the People's Republic of China in 1949, famously declaring that China has stood up. Since that time, China has evolved in countless ways and has somehow evolved into this economic power that we all know today. One thing that you need to know about China is that it's really, really crowded. I read a statistic that about one out of every five people on this planet, on this whole freaking planet, is Chinese. And that causes a lot of problems, especially when it comes to the transportation industry, you know, just getting people from point A to point B. China has tried to combat this with the one-child policy, and it's been really successful in some ways, but it's also had a lot of in unintended consequences. A really great thing that's come out of China's diversity and its massive population and its massive land area is Chinese food. It's got four different distinct schools of cooking, uh, which vary by region. And also when you get down to the city level, uh, a lot of cities have their own special cuisine, special dishes that can't be found anywhere else in China or even in the world, which is awesome. Another thing that unfortunately comes up in the discussion of China is disparity. You've just got all of these rich people in, you know, essentially the coast area. And then you've got everyone else who just you know, is just getting by. China has been called the world factory and because of that, a lot of the population has been suffering from the effects of pollution, which can be seen pretty much everywhere in the country. But lately the government has been really good about promoting environmental sustainability and green solutions more than most other countries in the world. China right now is in kind of the midst of a cultural identity crisis. You got people who are really traditional, really old school, and uh, sticking to what they grew up with. But you got the younger generation nowadays who are being raised in a more individualistic mindset and who are kind of stepping away from all the old traditions and way of life and they're becoming you know more consumer oriented areas that have stood for centuries as a landmark to ethnic and cultural identity are being wiped out in favor of the more just kind of droll and ordinary chinese buildings that you see in this picture here and this picture here and that you see in you know the news every day and you find this especially in the more developed areas of china areas that have been more westernized china has been about cultural homogeny and all of that especially in these past five years or so and uh, you see that reflected a lot in in ethnic tensions throughout the country besides stepping away from tradition you got a lot of people stepping away from religions as well or philosophies whether or not this is a good thing is up for debate you know i'm not going to talk about it right now so we got to move on. In Chinese society, and there's a long history of this, you've got what's called guanxi, which is kind of a network of social relationships. Friends help friends out. Friends help family out. Friends help friends of friends out with different things. It can be from getting a job to getting a fee waive, waived and 
um, to, to any number of things. If you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of thing. And it's a really complex system, and it's part of what makes China what it is today. Nothing can get done in China if you don't have connections. A lot of foreigners have problems getting their foot in the door as far as Guanxi is concerned, but you don't really need to worry about it. Foreigners are highly respected in China, and a lot of times, especially if you can speak Chinese, you'll have a lot more business and social opportunities uh, open before you, which wouldn't have happened if you were Chinese. It's kind of a positive racism that works out in our favor. If you're a foreigner, things are just more open to you. Chinese people themselves are really loyal and really just brutally honest and just really fun to be around. Of course, you got a lot of unfriendly and suspicious people and people who don't like foreigners, but I mean, that's true in every society and every culture in the world. The overall arc of human life is, is not altered in, in China or anywhere else. People are just trying to get by, trying to make a buck, trying to, you know, just live their life, be left alone or be really social. Everybody's just trying to leave their mark on the world. A lot of people have said that China is just a walking contradiction. It's just a really complex country. You know, you've got tradition versus modernity and you've got these different religions versus atheism. You've got communism versus capitalism and you got all this stuff that's going on right now and it's really hard to just put China in a nice easy comfortable box but people try to do it anyway that's the stuff that I've come up with for this video hopefully you liked it uh, feel free to like it comment it what did I leave out what do you want me to talk about uh, subscribe if you want and um, yeah I've enjoyed it and hopefully it's under four or five minutes if it is under four or five minutes yes if it's not oh well